Okay, I'm gonna briefly walk you through how to analyze the Wi-Fi spectrum in the area and how to identify potential issues and what to do about them. Let's get started. So I've got my Android phone here and there's an open source app called Wi-Fi Analyzer that I recommend. I'll put a link in the description below. So I've got that open and it starts with the menu here. So let's start with access points. So this will give us a list of all the access points that our phone is able to see. Depending on where you are or how congested your area is, there may be more or fewer in this list. Uh, first, let's take a look at the channel graph. So in this graph, we can see the different access points that our phone is able to get. You may notice uh, this is the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum, and there's actually three different spectrums that Wi-Fi is able to use now. There's 2.4 gigahertz, which is kind of the original, and then it expand was expanded to include a 5 gigahertz range as well. And uh, more recently with Wi-Fi 6 now, there's also a 6 gigahertz range. So there's three to look at. We're only going to look at the 2.4 gigahertz range today because the others are very similar. So this is the 2.4 gigahertz range. We can see something initially that is, is fairly good. So there's a number of access points in this area, but they're spread out across these channels. So you, may, you see at the bottom that there's 11 separate channels. In the 2.4 gigahertz range, there's actually 14 channels, but in the United States where I am, you're only allowed to use channels one through 11. So a well-configured access point is going to try to find a channel that is unused. Now you may notice the width of these different signals. So for example, let's take a look at uh, one of the signals that's on channel six, like this big purple one here. You'll notice that it's wide enough that it kind of covers channels four through eight. That's because it does require some width. So you can't, for example, be on channel one and then something else on channel two and channel three. It doesn't work that way. So for the most part, devices in the United States are gonna try to be on either channel one, six or 11 because that way they don't interfere with each other. So you've really got three separate channels that your devices can be on without interfering with each other. If you have more than three, however, there's gonna be some sharing. And that's one of the things that we're going to look at now. So we can see that uh, there's different levels of signal, which is for the most part good. Because ideally, the signal that you care about the most will be towards the highest. And if it's high enough, then the lower level signals aren't really a problem. We can see in this case that uh, there's, there's something on each thing, but uh, channel 11 is actually somewhat congested. Uh, let's take a look at a slightly different view, which will help us get a little bit more information. So I'm gonna click on time graph, and this is gonna take a second, but it's going to collect some data of the different signal levels that and how it changes over time. That's very helpful because we can then compare the ones that we care about that we know are in the same channel. We can compare them to make sure that they're not at the same power level, which is likely to create interference. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up so that we get some data. All right, now we've got a little bit of history so we can do some further analysis. So you'll notice that the main signals that we care about are staying fairly steady at the top. That's more or less a good thing. At the bottom, a lot of the lower level signals are kind of bouncing in and out, and that's okay. That can happen because uh, those access points are kind of far away when they're not something that we really need. If one of those was the main access point that we cared about, we would need to get closer or put another access point up. So sometimes those power drops can be as a result of switching channels or jumping around trying to find free spectrum, or it can just be interference from, from different things. But the main thing we care about is examining these power levels. So there's a couple of signals that were in channel 11 that are at a relatively similar power level. So that could be causing a little bit of interference. The way that I'm going to address this is I am going to combine them because there's a couple that don't really need to exist. I had forgotten that they were there. And one of them in particular is transmitting at relatively high power. So I'm gonna just go ahead and turn that access point off and that should help clear things up. But you can get some, diff some reasonable information through here and it can be a very valuable troubleshooting aid for you when you're trying to figure out network throughput issues. So again, we can uh, get exact power levels on this access points menu. And so now that we've kind of seen where they are based on the channel graph, for example, here, then it kind of means more to us 
as we look at the signal level over here. So if we were going to analyze the five gigahertz spectrum or the six gigahertz spectrum, it would be a very similar process. That is actually another potential solution. So if you have a number of access points that are kind of interfering with each other or there's not enough room in the spectrum for them, you can try moving them to a different spectrum like the five gigahertz or the six gigahertz, for example. Most devices that are made nowadays will support at least 2.4 and 5 gigahertz and increasingly the 6 gigahertz range. So for the most part, you should be good to go. So hopefully that helps you if you're having Wi-Fi spectrum issues. Thanks for watching.